While human civilization faces one upheaval after another right beneath our feet, another remarkable civilization continues to thrive as if nothing ever happened. The world of ants. Here are 10 fascinating facts about these incredible insects. Humans may be the most successful mammals on Earth, but among insects, that title undeniably belongs to ants. They first appeared over 100 million years ago, during the age of dinosaurs. Ants inhabit every continent except Antarctica. Their total biomass rivals that of all humans combined, making up about one-fifth of the weight of all terrestrial animals. We often think of insects as small, short-lived, and insignificant. But black garden ant queens can live for over 15 years, a remarkable lifespan for an insect. The queen is essential to the survival of the colony. Let's briefly explore how ant colonies are formed. Colonies typically have two main types of ants, workers and reproductives. Worker ants are sterile females that perform all the labor necessary for the colony's survival. Reproductives include queens and males. They grow wings and live in the colony for a short time, eating and gaining strength. Once a year, at a specific time, they take flight in what's called a nuptial flight. During this flight, a single female can mate with dozens of males. Males die shortly after mating. It's the only purpose of their short lives. Fertilized queens, however, descend to the ground, shed their wings, and seek a hidden place to start a new colony. About 99% of these queens die before founding a nest. They fall prey to birds or other insects, unable to defend themselves. But the rare survivors establish new colonies and become queens. Worker ants typically live up to three years, while the queen may live over 15. When a queen dies, most species of ants cannot replace her. No new ants are born, and the colony slowly fades as the last workers die. Ants are among the hardest working creatures on the planet, but not all of them labor honestly. Some species rely on slavery. In North America, there are ant species that raid other colonies. These slave-making ants cannot even feed themselves. Evolution has robbed them of this ability. Their powerful mandibles are built for battle and for stealing larvae. They organize coordinated attacks on rival colonies, killing enemies and seizing their young. The stolen larvae are covered in the raiders' pheromones to disguise them. Back at the nest, these larvae grow up believing they are part of the raiders' colony. As adults, these slave ants perform all tasks, feeding, cleaning, and even caring for the raiders' offspring. The slave-making ants do nothing but rest or go to war. Without enough slaves, these colonies cannot survive. They are entirely dependent on their captives. Ants are not the only creatures turning others into zombies or slaves. Enter the parasitic cordyceps fungus. Its spores infect ants and take over their bodies. Within days, the fungus compels the ant to climb a plant and bite into a leaf. The ant dies, locked in place, and the fungus grows out of its body. It releases new spores, infecting nearby ants. Interestingly, the fungus doesn't affect the ant's brain. It manipulates its muscles. This means the ant may still be aware, but powerless to resist. Fortunately, such fungal behavior is limited to insects. Humans, with far more complex systems, are not affected in the same way. But not only fungi exploit ants. Some caterpillars have evolved to use ants as bodyguards. These caterpillars have glands that secrete sweet nectar. Ants are attracted to the nectar and begin to protect the caterpillar. The ants guard it from predators, thinking it's one of their own. However, the caterpillar offers nothing in return. It's a parasite. The ants stop foraging for their colony and focus solely on the caterpillar. Thus, the relationship is entirely one-sided and harmful to the ant colony. Ants and humans have something else in common animal husbandry. Certain ant species raise aphids, treating them like livestock. Aphids produce a sugary secretion called honeydew by feeding on plant sap. Ants milk this nectar by stroking the aphids with their antennae. They protect aphids from predators and even carry them to shelter during rain. 
To keep them from escaping, ants bite off their wings. This relationship is mutual. Aphids receive protection, and ants get a steady food source. It's a perfect example of symbiosis. But ants don't just raise livestock, they farm too. Leafcutter ants have been cultivating fungi for over 60 million years. Found in Central and South America, these ants are expert farmers. They grow fungal gardens in vast underground nests. The ants feed chewed up leaves to the fungi. In return, the fungi grow and serve as the ants' main food source. Different castes within the colony handle specific tasks. There are massive soldiers, leaf harvesters, and tiny gardener ants that never leave the nest. Despite their agricultural skills, leafcutter ants are a major pest. They can strip a fruit tree of its leaves overnight. Ants communicate using pheromones. They have specialized glands that produce chemical signals. A scout ant leaves a trail while searching for food. When it finds something, it releases stronger pheromones to attract others. These signals also serve as warnings. If an ant encounters danger, it calls for reinforcements. Pheromones can also signal death, prompting the queen to lay replacement eggs. But sometimes, pheromones lead ants astray. In a rare but deadly event known as a death spiral, ants follow each other in circles. Mistaking the trail for a food path, they walk endlessly until they collapse from exhaustion. Some manage to escape, but most perish. It's a tragic flaw in their otherwise remarkable system. In regions like Australia, Africa, and North America, there are honey ants. These ants store nectar in the swollen abdomens of special worker ants called repletes. These repletes hang motionless in underground chambers. Their abdomens swell to enormous sizes, storing vital sugary fluids. In harsh conditions, they feed the colony by regurgitating the nectar. Some indigenous peoples even collect and eat these ants as a sweet delicacy. Humans have lived alongside ants for thousands of years. It's no surprise that we found unusual ways to use them. In Brazil, boys of certain tribes undergo painful initiation rituals involving bullet ants. The ants are placed inside leaf mitts with their stingers facing inward. Boys wear these gloves, enduring excruciating pain as a test of manhood. Their hands go numb for hours, with lingering effects for days. In some South American tribes, these ants are also used to suture wounds. The ants' powerful jaws are clamped onto the skin, then the body is removed, leaving the head in place. This natural suture holds the wound together until it heals a surprisingly effective method of emergency care in the wild. Ants can even be kept as pets. Formicariums, ant farms, are special enclosures that simulate a natural habitat. A formicarium usually has two parts, an underground nest and a surface area for foraging. It may be made of plaster with carved tunnels covered by a glass plate. Ants travel between the nest and the foraging arena via a tube. They can be fed fruit, insects, and sugary syrup. Raising ants begins with catching a fertilized queen, usually seen flying around in mid-June. Place her in a test tube with moist cotton, and she'll soon lay eggs. When the first workers hatch, they need protein and sugar to grow the colony. Once large enough, they're moved to a full formicarium. Some species are very easy to care for and can thrive for years. A colony can live up to 15 years, as long as the queen survives. Even leafcutter ants can be raised at home, though they require controlled temperature and humidity. If the fungal garden dies, the whole colony will perish with it. Thanks for watching this video until the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope to see you again soon.